New package arrived from the future was 8-bit in Great Britain and it took a while to uh, arrive here because I had to do some customs declaration and they sent it to the wrong address and stuff like that. This is something I need to complete two projects. First project is to get my um, CBM 3040 disk drive to work, which is a separate video. Um, and the second is my um, 1541 to PET adapter on which I'm working for quite some time now. I just noticed that my PET 2001-8 isn't able to do any floppy handling because it's basic version 1 and basic version 1 on the PET does not have the IEEE 488 commands implemented and as such cannot communicate with the disk drive or my floppy adapter. Yeah, so I needed a replacement and this is just that. This is the tiny mouth PET ROM RAM board. Um, and it should be a plug-in replacement which goes into the CPU socket and has all the basic ROMs inside. And I don't know what else it can do. It did cost me about 100 euros, which is not cheap, um, including shipping which was, I guess, 23 euros. Um, yeah, so let's uh, get it out, set up the pet and see if it works. Okay pad is out and open. I ground it myself. And let's take a look at this. So this goes into the CPU socket. And you can see that my CPU already is in a socket because uh, if you watched my pad repair videos, you know that I initially thought my um, CPU was dead, but it wasn't actually. So the CPU goes in here and this plugs into the CPU socket. And here are some dip switches, but it also has a reset switch. And it's RAM, ROM, both. And we want both, so we have to switch one and two on, which is already given. If we only wanted the ROM, we had to switch off the second one. Uh, the, the RAM and if we wanted to have only the ROM we would have to switch that off. So what you want is at least basic 2. And I guess we are even going with basic 4. So we have 3 and 4 on. And we have 5 off. So it's just the other way around. So this should give us basic 4. Don't know what 80 B60 means. 80 maybe 80 columns. I have to check this. It does come with this little paper here. Ah, okay, here's a little bit more on the dip switch settings. So the 40 does indeed mean 40 columns. 50 or 60 is the hertz we are using. I guess we're good. This These settings look okay. So I guess we are ready to test. So let's put it in and see if it works orientation we have to go like this let me try to get the CPU out here okay it's out yes that is good and that goes in here like this nice and then this whole package Okay, so let me quickly um, give you a little overview about what this tiny mouth um, PET ROM RAM board is. If your PET has dead RAM or your PET has dead ROMs, you can simply put in this RAM ROM replacement and you can um, pretty much take out the RAM, can take out the ROMs or some of them and the tiny mouth will replace these. So your pet will work without ROMs or RAM. And it's pretty much the easiest way, or one of the easiest ways, to uh, get replacements for RAM and ROM, because it's just one plug-in thing that you put into the 
CPU socket, CPU plugs on top, as you can see here. And you can switch between the various basic versions that there are, uh, being 1, 2 and 4. And you can perform a simple test for, on the pad and see what's going and what's not. You can selective um, switch on the replacement RAM and the replacement ROM. So you can use the built-in ROMs if you want and just replace the RAM or the other way around. It's uh, kind of easy to configure because you only have five dip switches down there. And that is pretty much what this does. So now I have a pad which I can um, simply configure the basic version or the ROM version by uh, flicking a little switch inside. And since the pad can be opened just by pulling it up, that's rather easy to do. Yeah, so there's also the SD2 pad, um, which is kind of a disk replacement that you can use with this. And so DOS Wedge from Niels Eilers is actually a DOS enhancement for the pad that gives you all of these um, disk drive commands which is also built into this RAM ROM board. Let's switch on the pad and see if it works. I'm always astounded if this works. Ah, and we get a basic four prompt. Nice. <laughs> and we get 32 kilobytes, which is much more than before. Very cool. Okay, that was uh, pretty easy. So now I have a basic four pad, which is kind of cool. And it has, can switch to the other basics just by switching the uh, mouse piano, as we call it in Germany, or Mäuseklavier, the dip switches. Okay, so let's quickly check if we can get basic two to run. Um, let me switch this off again. So for basic two, we have to off, on, off. Off, on, off. So we just switch number three down and we should have basic two. Let's see. Yeah, and that is basic two can see that it's basic two on the three hashes in front and the back. Um, if this was basic one, there would be three stars and three stars. And if this was basic four, it would say basic four. So great, works. Nice. Okay, I will switch this back to basic four and uh, then I can finally go on with my projects. Um, I wanted to give you a quick glance at the state of my PET to 5041 floppy adapter. Here's my um, 5041 to PET adapter. And or oh, rather a VC 1541 to IEEE 488, which uh, uses a board designed by Nicholas Becker. And um, yeah, you can plug this into the uh, 6522 socket of the 5041, standard 1541. This plugs in the back of the pad, the IEEE port. And then you can use your standard 1541 with a pad. Couldn't test this until now because uh, wrong basic. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this. So now I have a pad which I can simply configure the basic version or the ROM version by uh, flicking a little switch inside. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.